Hi, my name is Jonathan Davis, and today we're going to talk about leakage current mechanisms in deep submicrometer CMOS circuits. As time moves on, devices shrink in size due to CMOS scaling, which is the scaling in size of transistors. Every generation, there's a 30% decreased delay time in transistors, along with a decreased gate oxide thickness and threshold voltage. The reduction in threshold voltage, however, leads to a greater amount of leakage current, which can be attributed to several different types of leakage. Short channel effects are attributed to two main physical phenomena, which are the limitation imposed on electron drift characteristics in the channel and the modification of the threshold voltage due to a shortening channel length over time. There are five total short channel effects that can be distinguished, which are drain-induced barrier lowering and punch through, also known as DIBL, surface scattering, velocity saturation, impact ionization, and finally the hot electron effect. A common short channel effect in MOSFETs is drain-induced barrier lowering, or DIBL. This effect in MOSFETs causes the threshold voltage of a FET to be lowered when high drain voltage is applied. The cause of this threshold lowering is a concept of the Yao charge sharing model and energy conservation as a whole. As drain voltage is raised, the PN junction depletion region is forced to grow in size. The drain therefore has more work to do to balance out the charge in the depletion width region. Even if there is no applied drain bias, barrier lowering will increase as the channel length of a FET is reduced. The three most prevalent types of leakage current in modern CMOS circuits are sub-threshold leakage current, gate leakage current due to electron tunneling, and reverse bias leakage due to electron hole generation. When the voltage between the gate and source of a FET transistor is lower than the threshold voltage of the transistor in question, it will be operating in cutoff or sub-threshold mode. As shown in equation number one, a negative drain current will occur when the threshold voltage is greater than the gate to source voltage in that transistor. In the weak inversion region, the variation of electrostatic potential on the surface of the channel is pretty small. Likewise, the electric field along the channel is also small. The result of this is drift current that is a pretty negligible quantity in the weak inversion region. Overall, one could conclude that sub-threshold current is going to vary exponentially with a changing gate to source voltage, and it will more importantly vary exponentially with a varying threshold voltage, which is on a constant downward trend over time as CMOS is scaled. Electron tunneling is another one of the major causes of leakage current in modern CMOS devices. There is always a finite non-zero probability for electron tunneling, but this increases exponentially due to the scaling of gate oxide and due to electric fields in the semiconductor. When the electric field across a reversed bias PN junction is greater than 10 to the 6 volts per centimeter, a significant amount of tunneling will occur from the P region valence band to the N region conduction band. The electric field in a transistor is dependent on the doping concentrations in that transistor. As modern transistors are more and more commonly heavily doped in both the N and P region, the electric field in the transistor is therefore more and more likely to cause electron tunneling over the gate oxide layer. This is important to mention because methods such as halo doping are commonly used to overcome short channel effects in FET transistors. However, these doping techniques can result in a higher electron tunneling probability. One method commonly used to overcome short channel effects and leakage current is multiple gate devices. These devices also give higher intrinsic gain and lower channel length modulation, making them a very attractive topic for modern semiconductor manufacturers. Some examples of multi-gate devices are the FlexFET, PiGate, TriGate, FinFET, OmegaGate, and the Gate All Around transistor. FinFET is arguably the most commonly used modern multi-gate transistor. It is a non-planar multi-gate transistor type that was created originally in California, Berkeley by a group of researchers. Um, it is most commonly put on top of a silicone on insulator substrate, and it is named after the thin silicone fin that works as the body of the transistor. The reason it is so popular is there is a high level of electrical control that can take place over the channel. The channel length is determined by the thickness of the fin used, and the wraparound gate structure overcomes several short channel effects, which also reduces the level of leakage current in the device. FinFET is currently being used by many semiconductor manufacturers, such as Intel, AMD ATI, and Qualcomm. These semiconductor manufacturers are using FinFET to lower the device off-state current draw and to improve performance in their modern devices as scaling increases. The 
main reason why battery life in phones is currently improving, according to companies such as Qualcomm, is because of the use of FinFET transistors in their modern devices. Due to the success that FinFET has in overcoming short channel effects and leakage current problems, semiconductor manufacturers are looking into making three or even four gate devices currently. Intel has already moved on to tri-gated designs with the release of the 2012 Ivy Bridge CPU. Intel promises that three and four gate configurations will offer even further increased performance and loss prevention. This move is in part to further performance, but also to differentiate from competitors. Intel began using FinFET design in 2012 for commercial release, but they've always had interesting changes to design. For example, their FinFET shape was triangular, which was speculated to have a higher structural strength or a higher area to volume ratio than other designs, which would increase switching performance. The Ivy Bridge CPU uh, was being worked on around 2002 and onward, but it took them around a decade to work out fabrication and mass production issues. Other manufacturers are currently facing these same issues in creating three or four gate transistors. One of the benefits of Intel's new 3D transistor designs is their fully depleted operation, which lowers or almost eliminates the effects of DIBL and other short channel effects. These new transistor designs promise 37% increased performance at low voltages, over 50% less power usage at constant performance, with improved switching characteristics, higher drive current over transistor footprint, and only a 2-3% to added cost of manufacturing compared to current FinFET manufacturing techniques. Another multi-gate transistor type that contains 3 or 4 gates is the gate all-around FET. It is quite alike the FinFET in architectural concept, but the gate material surrounds the channel region on all sides, unlike with the FinFET. Different gate all-around FETs, such as the Pi FET and the Omega FET, can provide two or four effective gates. These transistors have been characterized theoretically and experimentally, and the transistor has been etched into a uh, nanowire, which has more electron mobility than traditional silicone. Some people estimate that around 2020, we will have five nanometer transistors that use nanowires for electron mobility instead of traditional silicone. The most popular method of reducing short channel effects in FET designs is a process known as halo doping, halo implantation, or pocket implantation. These implantations are usually followed by a post-thermal annealing process, abbreviated PA. Halo implantation is a lower power implantation process using a 45 degree incident angle of implantation. Halo doping lowers the source over drain depletion width, which therefore lowers short channel effects. These implantations reduce the off-state current leakage in transistors while maximizing both linear and saturated drive currents. For an N-type FET, boron and indium are generally the materials used in halo implantation. The effect of halo doping can be seen in the graph. Without a halo implant, lower channel lengths will cause threshold voltage to be cut down to nearly zero, meaning transistor off-states will result in a large leakage current. With the halo implant, there is a large threshold voltage bump at lower channel lengths. The highly doped regions caused by halo implants cause a phenomenon co called reverse short channel effect, or RSCE, by decreasing threshold voltage as channel length increases. Reverse short channel effect has only become a somewhat serious problem in recent years with the scaling of modern transistors, as extreme halo doping is required to negate the corresponding threshold voltage roll-off in smaller transistors. Another technique used to reduce short channel effects in transistors is known as retrograde doping. Retrograde doping is a low high channel doping technique that is used to improve the short channel effects found in small scale transistors. It is also done to increase surface channel mobility due to the doping gradient between surface channel and subsurface, where the highly doped subsurface will act as a barrier against any punch through. Retrograde doping causes the threshold voltage to be decoupled from the gate control depletion width, but the body effect and subthreshold slope are still coupled to that same gate depletion width. Reduction in this gate depletion width will improve short channel effects, but increase the subthreshold slope and the substrate sensitivity. Shown in the graph is the difference in channel length and threshold voltage between retrograde and superhalo doping techniques. In conclusion, leakage current is a prevalent problem in modern semiconductor manufacturing due to the extreme scaling that has taken place in CMOS circuits in recent years. There are a variety of techniques that can be employed to combat leakage current mechanisms, but semiconductor manufacturers need to keep cost effectiveness in mind. Intel, for example, spent over a decade to realize their Trigate design, which cost an incredible amount of money to afford the R&D team. 
when device power to performance ratio is the most important aspect of the product, which is the case for GPUs and CPUs, companies will spend a ton of money to develop new transistor types. However, for many applications such as devices still in the micrometer range for their transistors or above 70 nanometers for the transistor size, Trigate designs or even FinFET designs are unnecessary to combat leakage current, and the added manufacturing cost is not worthwhile. In many cases, halo implantation or retrograde doping, regardless of their introduced complications, is a better design choice for IC manufacturers. As companies such as Global Foundries create mass-produced multi-gate transistors, their, applica their application will be much more widespread over time. The cost of manufacturing is going to go down, and all devices eventually will employ such architectures for their transistors.